Alrighty, hello you lovely people. Welcome back or to the channel. My name is Scott Beeks and today we are going through the infamous cut serve in round net. So whether you've seen it, heard about it, maybe been gapped by it, today we're going to be going through the cut serve in round net. It's really important to note that just like any skill in any other sport, we need to be able to break it down into stages. We can't just pick up a ball and now do a fantastic cut serve. We need to understand what we're doing and to understand what we're doing, we're going to take it from stage one all the way up to be able to perform a good cut serve in round net. So first things first, what is a cut serve in round net? A cut serve is when a server now applies spin to the ball so that when this ball now travels in towards the net, there is a change of direction. If it just continue going straight, then there's no cut, there's no cut and there's no change of direction. But if there is spin applied to this ball, there will be a change of direction from the initial line in towards the net. An important thing to know is the difference between lane and jump. Jump is dictated by the purity of spin we now get on the ball and the jump, i.e. change of direction it makes once it contacts that net. The lane is now the position on the net that the ball contacts. Because sometimes in round net, we might not always get great spin. Right, it happens. And if we now don't get good spin, but we still manage to hit good lane, then it can still be good range on our serve. However, to make our serve even better, we really wanna make sure that we're getting both that jump, so purity of spin is good, so we're getting that jump and the lane because now that increases our range even more. So it's just really important to understand when you're watching your serves back, am I getting good lane or am I getting great jump? Or are we getting both? Now let's talk about the spin needed when performing a cut serve in round net. The spin we are looking to create on the ball is called corkscrew spin, also known as anti-clockwise spin, because you have a clock, right, and it's going against the clock. The more of these spins, i.e. rotations, we can get, and the purer these rotations, before the ball contacts the net, the bigger the jump we are going to see once it contacts the net. Sometimes we manage to not get these absolute pure spins, these pure rotations, and we sometimes get these. We're sacrificing a little bit of that jump for now topspin, because you can now see there's more topspin on the ball, almost not full topspin, but just that little bit in between. And now you can see that we're now going to get a little bit more topspin, so a little bit more speed on the serve, but we're sacrificing a little bit of that maximum jump. And now sometimes I'll see some people not manage to create that spin and they hit through the ball. And this is what will create side spin. And this side spin, if you see me now move up towards the net and make side spin rotations and contact the net, you'll see that there's not really any change of direction because there's not really enough rotations and not correct rotations to make the ball jump. And now if you see me move the ball towards the net with corkscrew rotations, you can see that there's a big jump and change of direction once the ball now contacts the net. And it is those spins, it is those rotations that we want to create as many as we can to see the biggest jump and change in direction. But sometimes it's okay if it doesn't get completely pure spin and we get a little of those top spin uh, rotations because that still creates a good jump for us. Not a great jump, but a good jump and increases the speed of the serve. So now we've gone through what a cut serve is and the spin required when performing a cut serve in round net. The next stage is the toss. And this is why again, the tosses videos and the principles of the toss came first because we need to build that pyramid. We need to build that base of knowledge and then we can start building upon it. If we don't have this base and we just go from zero to 100, it's gonna be really hard. 
We might even get a little bit lack of motivation because we see that it's such a hard thing to get to very quickly. So we've got to take everything in stages. And that's a little bit of the theme of this channel and my coaching philosophy that I luckily got from my dad and helps me a lot throughout sports. And I'm hoping you guys are enjoying as well. So with that said, let's get onto the toss. So the toss, and how does this impact our cut serve? Well, we can perform a cut serve, whether it be with a vertical toss, a lateral toss, or a phantom toss. We can perform a cut serve in all of them. However, the more consistent our toss is, the more opportunity we get for those hand contact repetitions. And if we're right now starting off just trying to learn the spin and learn the hand contact to perform a cut serve, then hey, let's start with that vertical toss. Why? Because we know that the vertical toss is the most consistent and easy to repeat toss in round net. So if we're trying to get as many good hand repetitions as possible to be able to get pure spin and good contact on the ball, then start with the most consistent toss. And then once you get really good at the cut serve and the vertical toss, hey, now try the lateral toss, or maybe try the phantom toss. But it's important to understand that if we're trying to learn a new hand contact in round net, whether that be a drop serve, a reverse cut, a cut serve, a jam, try to do it with a vertical toss first so we can get more of those repetitions when we're trying to learn the new skill. Now, onto the next stage. What is the hand contact needed to perform these lovely rotations for the cut serve? We need to understand first that the cut serve is a carry. It is not one singular contact on our hand. It is two contact points. So it is an initial contact point and an exit contact point. And there needs to be two contact points for us to now to manipulate this ball. If we only get one singular contact point, then we're not gonna be able to manage to get now those rotations that we're looking for in the cut serve. And this is what a lot of people have a struggle with when they're first trying to learn a cut serve, because before they've just made a singular hand contact when performing a serve in round net, whereas now we are making that double hand contact with an initial contact point and exit contact point to get those spins and those rotations on the ball to perform a cut serve. So what is the initial and exit contact point when we are performing cut serve and round net? Well, the first thing that we need to know is the firmness of our hands. We just can't be here and nice and floppy and a wet fish, right? And again, imagine you're giving a handshake. We are now firm in the hand, the same way we are when setting, right? We're here, we are controlled. And it's also now really, really important that our fingers are rigid and our fingertips are activated. Because if right now we just have our hands and our hands are nice and firm, but we don't have our fingertips activated, and we don't have our fingers rigid and ready, then this ball is gonna go straight through. But if we now have these fingertips activated and our fingers rigid, we can now trap this ball. So now it's even easier for us to get an initial contact point and an exit contact point. First thing to note is that there is not one way suits all and everybody. Some people like cutting and they like getting it this finger now to generate their spin. Other prefer these two fingers they get around and create the spin with these two. Other people prefer these bottom three. There is not one way that is perfect. There is not one way that suits everybody. So what I'm giving you is the information that you can take and experiment on your own. Because what everyone has in common is that their initial contact point is here in this Goldilocks golden zone that we use for setting. Because if it's too low in the hand, the ball's not gonna stay in that, in that initial contact point for long enough. If it's too high in the hand, then they're not managing to get around the ball because it's too high up in the fingers. So that initial contact point needs to be in this upper palm area, whether it be lower if you enjoy using the three fingers, or being that little bit higher, whether you're using your pointing finger and your middle finger. But this initial contact point is here, upper palm area. This is where we want to contact the ball for the initial contact point for the cut serve. Because now once we're here, whether we're using the bottom three or top two or just top one, we can now get around the ball. And that's step number one when performing a cut serve in round net. And now step two is we've got around the ball. We now need to get over it. 
Because if we can get over it, then we can now we can create those corkscrew spins. And to get over it, we now must bring this thumb and this pointing finger down immediately. This is something that needs a lot of repetition and practice because if we do this slowly, then it's gonna be really hard for us to get that ball in our hand long enough to get these rotations. But if we can do this quickly, then now we can get that spin that is desired for the cut serve. If we don't manage to do this, we're gonna end up hitting through the ball and that's when we create those side spin rotations. So to clarify, initial contact point here, upper palm area, Exit contact point is now what you prefer, whether it be these two fingers, these three, or just the top one. But we must get our palm, and especially our thumb and our pointing finger facing down on exit contact point, so that we can now get over the ball and create those corkscrew spin rotations so when it goes into the net, it makes that jump. Now you know the ins and outs of the cut serve in round net, but it's important to note that this cut serve doesn't solve everything. It will definitely help you improve your serving game, but there's also other things we need to do to improve ourselves as a player and as a server. And we're gonna go through those in future videos. But what you can do now is you can now make the most of the time that you're spending serving because you can now set up your tripod, set up your slow-mo, and you can now see, okay, how is my toss? Is it consistent? Okay, how is my initial contact point? Is it in the right area? Oh, and are my fingertips activated? You now have the information to give yourself that feedback to now help take your cut serve to the next level as a round it player. And if for any reason you want some more feedback or individual coaching, then feel free to check out my Patreon page where I like to share different drills and exercises that help isolate certain skills in round net into progressive stages, while also sharing online clinics that I do around the world and even the ability to have video feedback and individual meetings with me each month, if that's something you're interested in. And on that note, I hope you liked and enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe. We're so close to 1,000 and I will see you guys in the next one.